Import the icons RC into our application. Make sure it's placed in the same folder as the source code. Head back to the data method. Recall that icons are returned by using a decoration role. So if role equals cute core cute decoration role and if the item lies in the zeroth column or the first section we get the type info from our node and now we need to determine which icon we want to return so if type info is light we will return an icon there later if type info is transform and if type info is camera so we want to return an icon so let's construct one this is the way you construct icons and an icon takes a pix map as an input so let's create a pix map as well and the pix map takes a resource as input and to retrieve a resource at runtime you write colon backslash and the name of the resource in this case it's gonna be light png do the same for the others this one's gonna be transform and this one's gonna be camera you can give the full path to an icon here but since we don't want to work with full paths we want to work with our resources compiled into binary which we then imported here we have to use semicolon backslash and then the name of the image to retrieve that at runtime and then construct a pix map from it and then add that to this icon and then we finally return it so if we run this now we're gonna see that our icons show themselves and everything works as expected these ones don't have any icons because they are base node classes and not transform camera or light so we don't need this column anymore so let's remove it let's reduce column count to one and here let's delete the type info and yeah that's it if we run now the icons are enough to describe that this is a camera this is a light and this is a transform okay let's refactor some of our code we will create a custom method for our model to return a node from the Q model index class it will call internal pointer here's how the method looks like it will act like a helper it's a custom method so we're not actually overriding anything it's called get node and then we pass a qmodel index to it if the index is valid we get the internal pointer which is our node and if the node exists we return it else we return the root node we can change the index method so it's cleaner like so while we're at it we might also change this function call since it does some checks if the index is valid and stuff before calling it off we will implement inserting and removing of items at runtime by implementing the methods called insert rows and remove rows recall from the previous tutorials that insert rows and remove rows took three arguments those were position rows and a parent argument where we kept ignoring the parent argument time has come to make use of that parent argument so insert rows acts like an insert children method it will basically insert children into this parent let's first head back to our node class and implement a method called insert child which allows us to insert a child at an arbitrary location in the children list we can do that below the add child method insert child position where we want to insert it 
and the child itself. We check if the position is within the boundary of the list. If it's not, we return false. Else, we call insert with the given position with the given child. We also set the parent of the child to ourself and return true. The remove child method looks almost the same. So we can copy and paste, rename to remove child, set the parent to none, or we will receive a child here, so get the child by popping at the given position and then set the parent to none and return true. Alright, so our insert child and remove child methods are done. Finally, we need to implement insert rows and remove rows from our model. Those two. Alright, recall from our previous tutorial that when implementing insert rows and remove rows you had to use two methods. Those were those were begin insert rows and end insert rows and you did the inserting in between those two. The same goes for remove rows where you had to call begin remove rows and then end with end remove rows. Before implementing these two methods, let's go up and fix a bug. If you remember, I forced the transform node, camera node and light node to have a parent but I changed my mind, let's change that so they can actually be without a parent. And once we've, once we've changed that, we need to fix uh, another bug. And it's remove child method of our node class. Uh, we actually copied insert child, so we forgot to remove the child parameter. Because when you're removing, you only specify the position and then it pops it up. Gets the child and then sets the parent to none. We don't need to specify a child. Anyway, let's go back to our insert rows and remove rows method. So begin insert rows takes three parameters. Those are the parent to insert at and the position to insert at and how many items to insert or rather where it should end. And it will end at the given position plus the amount of children we will insert minus one because it's zero based indexing. The same goes for begin remove rows. So to actually insert children we need to get the parent node and we get it by calling our customly implemented get node function by passing the parent QModel index class to it to return the internal pointer. So self get node pass parent to it get our parent node and then start a loop here for row in rows in range rows we create a node here so child node is node untitled with the name and then we call parent node insert child at the given position parameter, we always insert at the same position because it will push the other children downwards. And then we specify the child we want to insert. But inserting several children will have the exactly the same name right now. So let's get the child count from the parent node. Child count. And then concatenate it with the name and cast it as string also. So this is pretty much it. I think we're done. Whoops. Should be equals there. And the uh, remove rows function is similar. We get the parent node, internal pointer. We start removing rows. We loop. And then we call remove child at the given position parameter. We always remove at the same position. <coughs> and then we call end remove rows 
and then finally return success. We need to do the same up here. Return success and we get the success from the insert child method of the parent node. So if we try this now, model insert rows, we insert at zero, we want to insert five items. Run this and we get five items inserted at the index zero. If we would insert at index one, it would be in between right pirate leg and left femur. So let's try that. And it works. Now it only inserts the default node class. What if we wanted to insert light nodes and transform nodes? The insert rows method and remove rows method is public methods that is used by the user and not by the view. So you can actually go ahead and make custom implementations such as insert lights and then copy almost all the code, if not all, and then just change the node to light node, change the name to light, and then call insert lights model insert lights at one and end at five or we want to insert at index one and we want to insert five items or five lights and we get an error let's see insert lights and insert lights there we go and we get five lights let's try the remove rows function as well if it works so calling remove rows whoops remo starting at one and removing five children calling it twice should default us to what we specified in the beginning and it actually works we got back what we had in the beginning so there you go we've now implemented remove rows and insert lights and insert rows method the insert rows method inserts the default node class we have only been inserting at the root let's try inserting at one of the n that one of the nodes that already exists so first recall that insert rows insert lights and remove nodes the remove rows actually take a parent argument which is a cube model index if you don't specify it, it defaults to the root. Let's specify it. But to be able to specify it, we need a QModel index that corresponds to a child. Let's get the hips node. Or let's get the right pirate leg. To get it, we call model index. We wish to get the item at index 0, column 0. And we specify an empty QModel index, which means get the item at column z at row 0 column 0 in the root which will be the root is hips so it will return right pirate leg to us so right pirate leg and then we can use that to insert into it five nodes and five lights so when we call this it doesn't insert at the root anymore it inserts inside the right pirate leg node and since we specified 1 as the starting index and end at 5 it actually inserted below the right pirate leg end node we get 5 lights and 5 nodes usually you would get the current selection when adding stuff so you can always get the index of the current selection in the model and then insert at that node we're done for now. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Stay tuned for more model view programming tutorials for PyQt. Next tutorial will cover Qt proxy model and the provided Qt sort filter proxy model that allows us to both sort and filter models. Best regards and happy coding.